Hey everybody, DIY Dad here with a indoor kind of video. We'll go outside a little bit, but most of this is going to be indoor because today we're going to update the control center for my permanent Christmas lights. Uh, I've been running for the last year on a set of ESP 8266s, which has worked fine, uh, but I had the opportunity to upgrade as part of wanting to add another section to it because I'm looking at probably having four or so channels uh, by the time this is done. So I bought a DigiQuad. And I love this thing from the looks of it. I haven't actually set it up yet. And the documentation on how to set it up is pretty lacking online. So we're gonna figure it out together. Here we go. So this is the Quinn LED Dig Quad or D-I-G-Q-A-D. Uh, this comes in two different flavors. You can get it in a DIY version or a pre-assembled version. Pre-assembled version comes with an ESP32 already mounted to it and flashed already with the latest WLED software. Uh, despite what you might think given the name of this channel, I actually went with the pre-assembled version. And I did that specifically because the pre-assembled one also contains a voltage regulator that allows it to automatically switch between 12, 24, and 5 volts and then pass that through to your light. So it makes it a little bit easier for my installation, which is a 12 volt setup. There's no jumpers or anything else you have to deal with. It handles or passing the 12 volts onto the lights and then sends five volts to the chip, does it all automatically. So that made life a little bit easier. So I'll point out a few of the features of this and we'll get it plugged in and see what it takes to configure it. All right, so this dig quad has um, some pretty pronounced benefits over some of the competitors out there and things that really, really drew me to it, largely around the convenience. Um, you've seen my setup if you've watched my videos for all my independent connections, and all of the power distribution and everything else that I did for my independent power supplies out to my lights. This handles a lot of that on board for you. So basically, you have your two main connections for, in my case, my 12 volt power supply. So my positive over here, my ground over on this side. And then what the system is going to do is it'll downsample that to five volt for the chip, and then it's going to pass 12 volts through these circuits and out to my positive connections here and my grounds here. That allows me to directly connect to my LED strips right from here without having to do any independent power management or worry about things like uh, making sure I'm on a common ground, things of that nature. The other thing that this does, which is a safety feature that if you've been researching about LED strips is highly recommended, even though the chances of a failure of this type are fairly minimal, is this allows these circuits to be fused. It puts these five amp fuses in place. The issue you have with independent power supplies and LED strips is if the strip fails, it's possible for it to send the wrong signal back to the power supply and still accept a full voltage uh, into the strip. And then because you have really narrow connections, really thin connections in the strip itself, that can create a problem where the strip creates a bunch of resistance and begins to heat up. And if it gets hot enough, it can spark, it can start a fire, bad things happen. What these fuses will allow you to do is in the event that the strip starts pulling too much power, these are gonna pop. And they're gonna pop long before you get into a dangerous situation where you have to worry about any of the bad things that could happen. There are ways to run this independently. It's just really nice uh, that it's all connected here for you. Now, if you look, you'll see that we have five of these fuses and there are seven connection points. So there's seven channels coming out across five fuses. Along the bottom, you can actually see how they're split up. So this channel's on its own fuse, this one's on its own fuse, this one's on its own fuse, and then these two are spanning. So if you have channels that are taking kind of the majority of power or you think you're gonna be getting close to that five amp number, run those off of these outer three channels, here, here, and here. And then anything that's taking a lower power draw, you can run off of the inner four, and those will share these fuses. This also has an independent five volt connection if you need it. Now this is for setups where you're running a relay to actually turn off your power supply when your lights aren't on. Um, LED strips don't really have an off setting by default. They have a setting that is do not light. So the chip turns off, but they're still processing power the entire time. A relay allows you to turn the power supply off and actually let them go inert so that the WLED software has to send a signal to the relay to turn the power supplies on so the lights can power on. If you're doing that, the problem would be is all this would turn off too. 
This independent power supply then would allow the chip and WLED to stay on even while all the rest of it turned off so that if you needed to use that setup, you could do that. Power supply clicks back on, feeds through here, powers your strips, off you go. I'm not doing that on my setup, so I'm not gonna have to worry about that. So first steps first, we're gonna have to get this thing configured. So I'm gonna take this and plug it in. This uses a USB-C connection for a data point. You can also use that to provide power, which is what I'm going to do while I'm here inside the house. And we'll take a look at the software and the setup and what this looks like in the actual interface. Okay, power is connected, lights are on. So now let's go to the computer. We're gonna to connect to the WLED AP Wi-Fi connection, which is gonna come off of this by default. And then we'll do the rest of it in the UI. Okay, we're here at my uh, downstairs home office. Got the computer powered up. I have my uh, dig quad turned on. So now we'll get connected to the network to do that. I'm just gonna open up our Wi-Fi settings here and we're going to select the proper network. I'm going to switch to a hidden network. Network is WLED-AP. Next. And then the security key is WLED-1234. Next. No. All right, and then when that uh, connects, it's going to auto-load a setup for you, or ask you, rather, to go to a settings page to actually log in the first time. So I'm going to open the network login page. It should go to the URL 4.3.2.1 and that is going to uh, present you with a WLED startup screen. So here it goes, 4.3.2.1 and here we have the ability to configure it to actually go on to our network. So we're going to do that first. We're going to Wi-Fi settings and I'm not going to show you this stuff. Uh, I'm going to kind of pause this video and connect that and then I'll pick it up once it's connected. Uh, we'll connect to it on its internal IP address. All right, we're connected to our uh, dig quad from Quinn LED using its new IP address on my home Wi-Fi. And the main reason I did that is I suspect I'm going to have to update this. It comes advertised as being already flashed with WLED. That was true, but I'm not quite sure what version we're running, so we're gonna go check. To do that, we're gonna go up here to the top to config, click on that. Go on down to security and updates, which is the bottom option on the screen. And if you scroll down in the about section, you'll see the current version, which in our case is running 13.1. Now currently, uh, WLED is running version 14. So we're going to need to update this. I have a whole separate video that talks about how to do this on the 8266. We'll do it for this one here because it only takes a minute. So we're gonna scroll up a bit and there is a button under the heading of software update called manual OTA update. OTA is over the air, meaning it's going to use Wi-Fi on my system to pull that update down, as opposed to me having to be USB connected to a computer and pushing a flash. So I'll go with manual OTA. It confirms that our current binary version is 14.0 and that we're running on 13.1, so we do need to do an update. This version 14.0 is actually a link. So if you tap on it or click on it, it's going to open up your uh, browser to GitHub and you'll see all of the assets for version 14 listed below. Now you need to pull the proper version for whatever control you have. The dig quad uses an ESP32, so that's the one that we're going to pull. There is a version of the ESP32 uh, that has um, kind of pre-built things for being audio reactive, meaning it already has kind of the chip associated to it. There's also a version of it that has an ethernet port directly wired in instead of using Wi-Fi. If you have one of those, you're going to want to select those uh, by default. We're just going to pull the ESP32 bin. So select that. That's going to download. Now this is going to go into wherever your downloads folder is. I'm going to move it to my desktop just to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, and then we should be able to actually go and apply this update. So we'll close this window. I'm going to close my GitHub window. Go back to this main software screen. If you're not on the screen anymore, go to config, software and updates, hit the OTA button again, and then hit browse. That's gonna open up a browser. We're going to select our WLED32 file, hit open, confirm it's selected here, and hit update. Now this process takes a few seconds. Uh, depending on the software hardware that you're using, it can take a little bit of time, it's usually about 10, 15 seconds. It's going to update and refresh, and then it will uh, reload the system using the new version. 
Okay, after the update is completed, it will say uh, installation complete, rebooting, then it's going to reboot back to your interface and you'll see we look a little bit different now because we're running on version 14. We can confirm that by going back to config, security and updates, and then scrolling down to about and we're now on WLED version 14. So now we're ready to actually look at setting this up. Now I've already done the Wi-Fi setup, that's a pretty simple thing uh, that's going to be specific to your config. Essentially, you're going to do the same setup that you've done for any of your other controllers here. And the main part of that is going to deal with your LED settings. And that's where one of the kind of unique things about this config is going to be found. So I'm going to hit back to my main screen. Uh, you'll see we do have some additional things here like 2D configuration that came in version 14. That's if you're running like a grid of lights that you want to be able to uh, project images onto. That's how you tell it how you have those set up. Um, I'm going to do that at some point, haven't done it yet. So I'm going to go into LED preferences here, which is the third option down. And what you'll see here are all of your individual settings that you had on your previous controllers. The difference is the system is going to give you some other pieces or some other questions. Now for me, I'm running 12 volt LEDs. So I'm going to update that to 12 volt. And I'm going to scroll down here into my options. And you'll see I have options or specific configs for each of my channels. So each of those main pinout connections on the WLED or the Quinn LED board, we're going to set how long the LED strands are for each of them. So I'll go through and configure all of that to match my ESP8266s that I'm replacing. At that point, it's just a question of connecting this, wiring this, and testing it out. All the other options are largely the same. Uh, there are a few things that you can choose with this setup though. Since you're now using a single controller with four different channels in it, you can pick whether all of those channels are going to operate exactly the same or whether each of those channels should operate as a separate segment so that they can be controlled independently. And you'll see some choices for that right here on the screen. There are the abilities to set these segments up later. You can have it configure it for you. So by default, the system assumes that there is one strand attached to each of these. And then down at the bottom, there's an option for making a segment for each output. So having it automatically created so that each one can be controlled and selected separately. I'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to save this. LED settings are saved. It brings me back to my setup. I go back to the front now. So you can see it created now my four segments for me. I have segment 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I can choose then which configs are going to which segments. Um, I also have some ability to name these, so segment 0, 1, 2, 3 doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I can configure them to be more independent than that by expanding these and then editing them. So if you open any one of these segments with this little carrot, uh, I should say also, I'm in PC mode, which takes all of the things that are formatted to fit on a mobile browser and puts them uh, sideways, so you don't have to go into separate tabs. If you are not, you'll need to go into the section called Segments to see these, which you'll find down at the bottom. If you have a screen like mine, you can go to PC mode and that Segments window just drops right here. Once you're in your segment, if you expand the segment itself, there's a little pencil icon which will allow you to edit the name of the segment. So I'm going to do that, I'll call it Roofline. And then to accept this, you have to hit the check mark that's in a very non-intuitive spot right here in the middle of the screen that's going to save your settings for all of the things on this page. So we'll check that and now my segment is called Roofline and I can do the same thing for segment 2 and I'm going to call this one Roof Peaks. Save it. Now I've got my two main segments set up and then my third segment is going to be my garage doors. So I'll save that and now my segments are ready to go. So I can configure the lighting config for each of these and then as I apply my settings it's going to apply those settings to the segments that I have selected and allow them to uh, properly address and properly reflect what we're doing with coding. Now the rest of this and a little bit of tutorials on how to do the config I'll do in a separate video. I wanted to get to this point. So yeah, not a whole lot to it. Pretty easy setup. I like the device so far. I'm excited to get it connected. Uh, but this being the end of a DIY dad video, I of course owe you a dad joke. So, why was the snowman caught rummaging around through the carrot bin in the produce section? Simple. He was picking his nose. 
right? Remember with any DIY project, most important step is just to do it. No one's going to notice the flaws unless you point them out to them. Have a great day. Stay safe. Have a wonderful holiday season. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye.